So guys, if you can, please subscribe to the channel and please smash the like button on this video. So guys, in this next news story, a gang were caught smuggling £1 million of cannabis from Canada into the UK through Heathrow Airport. A court heard the drugs were due to be delivered to a business address in Dartford, but they were intercepted at the airport. Border Force officers discovered two pallet loads of cannabis within a shipment of computer casing in February 2021. Detectives were able to link the shipment to members of a criminal network who had been arranging the importation of cannabis. The plot was organised over the encrypted mobile phone platform EncroChat, which international law enforcement agencies cracked in the spring of 2020. The gang members have now been jailed for a total of more than 17 years. So the following offenders were sentenced at Woolwich Crown Court. Kuran Gill, who's 32, organised the importation and honour distribution of the cannabis and also facilitated the sale of a kilo of cocaine. Officers seized around £105,000 from his home following the arrest and Gill pleaded guilty to conspiracy to import a Class B drug, conspiracy to supply cocaine and possession of criminal property and he was sentenced to seven years in jail. Jas Singh, who's 32, of South West London, was also involved in organising the importation and distribution of the cannabis. Using the chat handle of Real Crocodile, he exchanged multiple messages with Gill in which they openly discussed routes into the country, ways in which the drugs could be concealed and how much it would cost. Singh pleaded guilty to conspiracy to import a Class B drug and he was jailed for four years and nine months. There was a Gregory Blacklock, who's 30 off Maidstone, he was the director of a Dartford business where the cannabis discovered at Heathrow was due to be delivered. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy to import a Class B drug and he was sentenced to three years imprisonment. And Govind Bahia, who's 30 of Gravesend, assisted Gill with advice and direction on the type and quantity of cannabis to purchase. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy to import a Class B drug and he was jailed for three years. Investigating officer Detective Constable Steve Brown of the Kenton Essex Serious Crime Directorate said the cracking of the EncroChat mobile phone platform has led to countless criminals being caught red-handed and brought to justice. Organised gangs across Europe thought they could openly discuss the criminal activity oblivious to the fact the system was not as secure as they thought and that every message they sent was bringing them a step closer to prison. Crime does not pay and I am satisfied that those involved in this particular conspiracy are now behind bars where they belong. In another news story coming from Kent Ways, two men have been jailed after a man was killed in an attack of mindless street violence in Folkestone. Anthony Armstrong, who was 49, was killed in a street attack in New Street on October the 6th last year. Anthony had been walking with friends during the afternoon when he saw a group of people he knew. That included the duo Mark Green and Reuben Smith, who were arrested in connection with the attack. Police said the attack took place after Reuben Smith took offence to a comment made by Anthony and he proceeded to punch him in the face. Mark Green then continued to assault Anthony who fell backwards and hit his head on the ground. The pair quickly fled the scene but were arrested by officers on the same day. Anthony was unconscious as a result of the assault and was flown to a London hospital but he never recovered from his injuries and the 49 year old died three days later. I just want to say rest in peace Anthony and my condolences go out to your family. Smith and Green were charged with the assault on Anthony and also with one count of a fray in relation to a separate incident. And today, at Canterbury Crown Court, Mark Green, who's 41, was jailed for eight years after he admitted the manslaughter of Anthony Armstrong, who was found not guilty of a fray. And Reuben Smith, who's 19, admitted counts of a fray causing actual bodily harm and was found not guilty of manslaughter following a trial and he was sentenced to a year behind bars for a fray and ABH. Investigating officer DC Tanya Pickering said, The incident was an example of how mindless street violence can end in tragic consequences the loss of life and for Green and Smith custodial sentences. I thank the witness for their support in the investigation and my thoughts are with Mr Armstrong's family and friends. And in a new story coming from Cornwall, members of a drugs gang have been sentenced to many years in prison for sending Class A drugs to Cornwall and selling them from a home of a local addict. Richard Vassie's St. Hostel home was taken over by members of the Ghost Line who then peddled misery to local addicts. Basie Imadulul Hak, who's 24, 
Uthman Hak, who's 22, and Jaden Edgington, who's 25, appeared at Truro Crown Courts to be sentenced after being convicted of being concerned in the supply of Class A drugs. There was a fifth defendant, Sean Cruz, who's 46. He was sentenced in his absence after failing to attend the hearing. All the defendants are from Birmingham, except for Vasey, who's from St. Austell. Prosecutor in the case, Peter Coombe, said that on February the 4th, 2020, Edgington was based at Vasey's home and was collected by Cruz who dropped off Khan and Hack at the property. Edgington was arrested with Cruz on the way back to the Midlands. The prosecutor explained how Edgington had on him two phones which showed dealers lists and photos of bundles of cash. There were also recordings on his phone of him boasting how he made £285 in the morning. The footage clearly showed St. Austell's streets. The prosecutor said that Edgington reported back to a drugs line and that it was clear he was being directed as he provided updates on levels of drugs and what he had left to sell. The prosecutor said Edgington had a supervisory role and it was clear he was controlling Vasey as he was receiving instructions about when Vasey would be paid. Jaden Edgington was stopped and he had more than £500 in cash on him. In an interview, Vasey said that he had allowed his home to be used for drug supply. When the address was raided, Khan was present and officers found 180 pre-prepared street deals of Class A drugs worth around £1,800 stashed around the property. Hack was also there and he was found to have had £355 in cash on him. Phone messages from Khan linked him to the operation, including a message saying that he'd been kicked off a mechanics course and had turned to dealing. Vasey's phone also showed messages offering drugs for sale. Cuter said phone showed Hack and Khan were travelling overnight with crews and arrived a couple of hours before police executed a warrant. Vasey had a phone message from someone higher up telling him that they had his cash, the prosecution alleging that he too performed a role in the supplying of drugs. The ghost line was linked to all five defendants, although there was little phone contact between them. Prosecutors said the evidence showed they were all being directed by others and everybody bar Khan had direct phone contact with the line. On behalf of the absent crews, the court heard that he suffered from poor health and trauma from a young age, which led him down the path he took. Cruz doesn't accept being involved with supplier drugs, saying he was paid to drive the van with his codies down to Cornwall. The defence for Hack said he has no previous convictions and that this is the only time he's engaged in criminal activity. His defence said at the time he was a first year university student, he had taken stock of his life and cut contact with those involved and reduced his drinking. He feels genuine remorse for the shame he has brought on his family. The representative for Khan said he had been working in a garage, injured his back and left his job. He became isolated from his family and started taking drugs and became involved in this enterprise. Three years on, he's a very different man and has rebuilt his relationship. The representative for Vasey said he performed a limited function and was under direction. He was involved due to his vulnerability and had little awareness of the scale of the operation. He's a long-term addict and has been using drugs on and off for 20 years and his life is difficult and he has suffered for some time with paranoid schizophrenia. He was particularly vulnerable in the community. And the defence for Edgington said he was unemployed and needed money. He quickly realised he was over in his head and he wanted out. He went to the police and tried to find a way back to Birmingham. He has experienced custody for the first time and he has reflected. So in sentencing, the judge said it has been said before that Class A drugs are a blight on this county and cause widespread misery. Villains from out of county, from the northwest and the midlands, target this county. He said it is clear that all five defendants were being directed by others and that none of them were by means at the top of the chain. So Cruz was jailed for four and a half years with a warrant out for his arrest. Hack was jailed for three years, Khan for 27 months, Vasey for 27 months and Edgington for 32 months. So guys, these are a number of stories coming from the streets of the UK. It's your boy GT. Keep it locked. Keep it real.